Take a moment and meet your new Shader Editor for Unity 3D. Amplify Shader Editor gives you more flexibility and control over your shaders unlike anything you've used before. This includes extensive support for built-in rendering, UI, legacy, particles, custom lighting, terrains, and of course modern support for URP and HDRP shader types. These also offer full control. It's Unity 6 compatible, and LTS support is guaranteed. Let's dive in. Right-click to bring up its extensive node library and create a way. I'll add a texture node to the base color in this simple example. You can also drag and drop nodes from the right tab. I'll pick a color node for the emission and connect it. I personally prefer shortcuts. I just need to hold a key and left-click to create a node. You can also alt-drag a node to add it to an existing wire or remove it. Very handy. I'll add a float node to control intensity and we're good to go. You can learn more about shortcuts in the helper tab. It's also a good place for useful links and other information. That's cool, but these nodes need to be set as properties so I can control them in a material. I can change the type directly on the node or in the left tab properties. You have full control and additional node attributes to take advantage of. Set name, shader default and material values, precision, and even create sliders with ease. Some nodes also have context-specific attributes that you can toggle like headers or HDR. Nodes can also display previews. Click the expand arrow to reveal it. Adjusting material property order is also simple. Deselect everything or click the output node to show shader parameters on the left. Drag properties to reorder them. I'll save my shader to update. And I can now see those properties are ready to be used in my material. This is a modest example, but I bet you can already see how easy it is to start. And you're not alone in this learning adventure. There's a sharing feature built into our editor. I'll add a comment node with the shortcut C. Make sure my nodes are selected and click the share button. Now I have a reusable link in my clipboard that I can share with anyone in the world. All they need to do is paste it in their editor to use my nodes. Pretty cool, right? You might be starting to think that this is a lot to memorize, but don't let that get in your way. Our editor is made to be intuitive and requires very little knowledge to get started with. We prepared it in a way that you won't need to change most properties and everything just works out of the box for most cases. The advanced features and properties are there for when you're ready to use them. Plus, you get the Amplify Shader Pack for free. It includes hundreds of samples to teach you the basics. We also provide over 450 learning samples that break down most nodes into clear and documented examples like lighting algorithms, noise, and more. Let's go deeper. There's a lot of cool functionalities in our editor that aren't immediately apparent. Like other node-based editors, you can drag wires to connect nodes. Hold Alt and left click to disconnect or simply drag the wire out. You can also swap connections by holding control while dragging. Wire position can be adjusted with control points. Just double click a wire to add them. Remove by selecting the point and pressing delete or backspace. Node wires are the logic pathways of your shader. You can highlight the flow of data by selecting a node. Pretty handy. You can even visualize data typecasts in the editor with the multi-line mode. Press Ctrl W to enable it. And in this case, you can see two vector three values going into the dot operation node and the resulting float that's outputted. You can also press W to color code them. Now you can see casts directly and identify what you're looking for faster. Shaders can get quite big. A nice way to avoid spaghettification is to use register and get local variable nodes. These are editor-only variables. They won't affect performance in any way. You can select a register or get node to highlight connections. They really help keep things organized, and a get node can pick from a register node as many times you want. In this case, the value registered is used in four different places. Let's create some of our own. I have this mock control mask that I want to use on a lerp all the way over here, so it's a perfect place for this. We can add the nodes by right-clicking and searching for them, but I much prefer to use the shortcuts. Press R left-click for register and G left-click for get nodes. You can also set name and precision. I'll add the get node to my lerp node. Select the registered variable I just created and I get a connection to my control mask without any overlapping wires. And if you happen to get a bit lost, it's easy to navigate your nodes using its references. Just click to find it. And it works both ways. Another cool thing is that register nodes let data pass through. They can be part of the graph. You can also create shader function assets with our editor. Let's look at the existing burn shader function example. I'll just double click to open. Keep them as reusable assets or just cool snippets you can save for later use. You can add a description, set a category, and even additional directives. Add how many input and output nodes you need and adjust their order along with material properties, as needed. Once created, they can be used in your shaders just as regular nodes. 
You can spot them by color and SF icon. Just double click them to open. And with our flexible multi-tab support, you can set your own layout to adapt to your work style. You can even drag and drop assets like shader functions or textures into the editor. But sometimes you just want to use your own code. And for that, we have custom expression nodes. Custom expressions work just like other nodes, but allow you to add your shader code directly. You can set the mode to create or call and even add code files. Add as many inputs and outputs as you need and adjust their order. You can go even deeper by creating your own nodes with our custom node API. This does require some programming knowledge, so be sure to check our documentation. A nice example of this would be the Tri Planar node. By creating our own custom node, we can go from a complex graph technique to a clean solution using a multi-purpose node we can adapt to our needs. Custom nodes can be reused throughout your team's pipeline without the artist ever needing to mess with a shader function or custom expression. It's also possible to create your own shader types with our shader template system, like this double pass unlit. You're not locked into a specific set of shaders like with alternative editors. ASC is purposely made from the ground up to adapt to your unique requirements. Check our own templates to get an idea of what's happening behind the scenes. They can be a good starting point for customization. And of course, you own everything you create with our editor. There's over 150 packages at the Asset Store powered or compatible with ASE, so check them out. We hope you enjoyed this updated overview of our editor. There's a lot to unpack and to learn, so be sure to check the documentation links in the description. And don't forget to join our growing Discord community with over 7,000 users. We're always just one message away. Thanks for watching.